Okay, so if you noticed that you were having a hard time getting your hips back over your heels, there are two things that might be helpful for you to work on. Number one is your hamstring strength and length. So the strength and length of really the entire backs of your legs, but in this case, it's usually the hamstrings that are the keys. So I'm gonna show you two exercises for your hamstrings in this little video to start getting them longer and stronger. I'm also gonna show you an exercise for your psoas muscles. Your psoas muscles connect your thigh bone from the front of your thighs diagonally up to your low back. These muscles are really tight in a lot of people and they're also part of what's holding you up if you have a tendency to let your pelvis shift forward and kind of hang out in your pelvis here. So for most people who have this pattern, you're gonna discover that you are someone with a tight psoas. So we're gonna go through my favorite psoas exercise as well. Let's start with the hamstrings though. So for the hamstrings, you are going to simply do a forward bend. This forward bend is not a giant forward fold like you might do in yoga. This is a forward bend where you're trying to just isolate the movement of your hamstrings. When you bend forward like this, and you can certainly try doing a couple of forward bends right now as you're watching me, see if you can notice a few things. So first of all, what we're doing here isn't really a stretch. What we're doing is we're folding in our hips, we're flexing our hips, and we're lengthening through the backs of our legs. This lengthening as my upper body is lowering is what's called an eccentric movement of the hamstrings. They are producing force to make sure I don't just fall over as they get longer. That eccentric movement is very lengthening and strengthening for the hamstrings. So this forward bend is an excellent way of getting used to having longer, stronger hamstrings and building that hamstring strength. And also has the benefit of being a very direct translation to how your hamstrings would feel when you walk. So we're gonna set that aside for now. It's just another side benefit, uh, but just know that as you do the coming up phase of this movement, that's about what your hamstrings are gonna feel like when you are landing on your heel and pulling backwards with your leg and walking. So that's kind of cool. All right, so let's talk about this hinge. So this hinge is not rocket science, but many of us tend to hinge with our spines as well as with our hips. And I would like you to see if you can isolate just your hips. Let's start by using the wall. So on the wall, you can just place your butt gently on the wall. Don't put a ton of weight there. You can walk your feet forward a few inches, six, 10 inches, not very much. Put your hands on your pelvis, normally called your hips, but actually your pelvis, and just try that forward bend here. So as you forward bend here, feel how your butt moves on the wall. Feel how as you go back and forth, it feels like the wall travels down your butt as you move forward, and it feels like the wall travels up your butt as you move back. That is what we want. We want your sit bones to lift as you bend forward. We want your sit bones to return to their normal resting position as you come back. That is your hips hinging. So you want to have this sense of your pelvis rotating forward and down as you go forward, coming back to straight as you come up. That's step one. Step two is let's stabilize the back. So what often happens is we get this hybrid movement where we are bending at our hips, we're also bending at our low back, and that's often how you're gonna get these really deep forward folds is because there's a lot of back movement. There's nothing wrong with back movement, but most of us do a lot of it and don't do as much hip movement. So we want to be able to isolate, and that will help you really focus on strengthening your hamstrings. What I like to do here is I like to put my hands on the front of my body in between my low ribs and those pelvis points that are not your hips. So you can just make a starfish kind of um, shape with your hands. Place your hands on your belly. And as you bend forward, I don't really want there to be a lot of change under your hands. So I don't want you to feel like you're 
pushing out your ribs. I don't want you to feel like you're curling over your hands. See how my hands have changed now? So you don't want that to happen. You want to maintain your starfish shape. Use your starfish shape to maintain your upper body shape. And you're just going to bend forward and see if you can keep your torso like a Barbie torso and your legs like Barbie legs. And all that's happening here is you are hinging back and forth at your hips with straight legs. And that's a really nice way to start introducing your hamstrings to some strengthening, to some lengthening, and help get your hips working independently of your low back. Another place you could put your hands for this is on your low back, and you just don't want to feel any extra bending or curves being added to your low back as you go down and then up. And of course, another way you could check for this is by taking a video of yourself, and I know people hate doing this, but it is one of the best ways to see what your body is up to. And so what you'd be looking for here is you really don't want to see as you're bending forward, your ribs poking out like that, or maybe you get some of your bend forward and then you curl forward. That's not what we want. We want your back to start with its standing curve and we want it to finish with its standing curve even though now it's bent forward. So you can practice this a billion times. It will only be good for your walking and for your hamstrings. And if you decide that you want a little extra challenge, you could add a rolled up towel or something like what I have here, a half round foam roller. You could put your feet up onto it and you could practice this forward bend here. And you can certainly hang out at the end here. Here it turns into a bit of an isometric. And then you could lift yourself back up and just really get to know the backs of your legs. And as you get to know them, as you strengthen them, as you lengthen them, that length and strength is going to be what's starting to hold you up when you work on your hip over heel alignment. Okay, so that's exercise number one. It's called the double calf stretch. It's awesome, you can do it all the time in your regular life. There's no need to have an exercise session devoted to it, but do make sure that you're watching for your technique so you can learn how to isolate your hips, okay? Now we're going to move down to the mat and work on another hamstring exercise as well as our psoas release exercise, okay?